So now, put your earbuds in just to make sure. Six o'clock, so we're gonna switch and go. All right. Hello, mystical souls. Super excited about tonight. We're gonna to be talking some tarot this evening. So thank you for joining me for this exciting tarot consultation. Um, my name is Patricia Tate and I'm an astrologer, a Reiki master, a tarot consultant. Um, I'm inviting you to uh, like my channel, hit that notification bell so that you receive notifications all the time to let you know what's going on. If you are new, please, um, to get updates as soon as they're released, hit the notification. For those of you who are regular, thank you for your continued support because I appreciate each and every one of you. So while we wait for everyone to arrive, um, I'm gonna invite you to sign up for my newsletter where I let you know the latest happenings in the sky and I'm gonna leave a link for it in the comment section. So. This Tuesday, I'm going to be offering tarot. Next Tuesday, I'm going to be offering um, September 12th will be the new moon in astrology readings. You can sign up ahead of time with the PayPal link that's provided. I will need your exact date, time, and location of your birth to get started. And it will be a donation with the PayPal link. You can find the PayPal link for tonight's donation in the comment section. I am offering three cards for $20 and five cards for $40. I will let you know um, when you are in the queue who is going to be up next. So I'd like to share with you a little bit about my Elemental Wisdom deck. So I created this deck um, to represent the earth, air, water, fire to go along with uh, tarot. And with this, it, there are 11 cards for each and it comes with a little bit of sage and a prayer that goes along with it so you can smudge it and cleanse it and bake it your own. I use these for a daily card pull and along with it comes an explanation for describing the meaning and the symbolism for each card. So I'm um, not seeing all the people that are in the comment section right now, but I know that you are out there so I am saying hi to each and every one of you and asking you to give me a thumbs up and share. Let me know if you know what your sun, moon, and rising is. So tonight, I am coming from the beautiful state of Ohio. I just got back from New York and from uh, Connecticut. I was in both. And so I'm located in the northern part of the United States. I love to travel. I love to take astrology on the go and tarot on the go. So for those of you who are seeking personal consultations, please be sure to check out my website where you can find, where you can book a one-on-one -on -one session that's tailored just for you. There's going to be a link for that in the section below. I'm also offering videos. Uh, if you go back and check out the YouTube channel, you can find videos on the major transits so you can stay up to date on the current happenings. For those of you that are new, there is a Mercury retrograde, there is the nodal shift into Aries and Libra, and there is Mars and Libra. I put out a new moon in Virgo, and when I encourage you to listen for your uh, rising sign and then your sun sign. And since we're just starting September, I do have Septembers and Octobers there, and it'll let you know about what to plan for the future. So also, I'm going to be releasing tonight uh, Jupiter Stations Retrograde. So I'm going to be releasing that um, ahead of time tonight at midnight. So you can look at the house and you can plan accordingly as this energy is building us up for the October 14th and 28th eclipses. They're going to activate your nodes of Aries and Libra in your chart. So... Angie, Angie, oh my gosh, I'm so excited that you are here again. And Cynthia, Virgo Sun and Scorpio Moon, oh my goodness, Virgo Sun. So you just had a solar return, or you're going to be having a solar return, and Scorpio Moon, Leo Rising. Okay, so you've got uh, Earth, Water, and Fire all mixed together. I love that combination, Cynthia. And... Um, I love, hello, um, the International, and Patricia M, 
Taurus, okay, Patricia, you are in the queue tonight. You are going to be the second one up, so please be paying attention. Taurus, Sun, and Virgo rising. Absolutely love all that. All right, so I'm going to get started. Let's just jump in. Um, I'm a smidgen about what's going on. Remember that we have currently, Venus has just uh, stationed direct. It's trying to move forward in the sign of Leo, and we have... Libra, I'm um, sorry, Mars in Libra as going direct also. The rest of the planets, including Chiron, are all stationed retrograde. So that's Chiron, the wounded healer, Mercury, the communication and travel planet, um, Jupiter, the gaseous planet that offers gifts and abundance and spirituality, higher learning, Pluto, Pluto, the planet of great transformation, Saturn, where we need boundaries and how we have to work for things to make them, uh, to manifest a strong foundation, Neptune, our hopes, wishes, and dreams, and Uranus, the planet of shock and surprise and higher, higher thought and ideas. So with all of this, this, these planets stationed retrograde, and the last one that's going to join is Jupiter. We're now going to slow down from the summer growth that we've had, and now we're going to be integrating everything that we've learned. We're going to be taking things in and saying, all right, I need to move forward, but I have gained a lot of information, and now I have to take it in and process it because our hopes, our wishes, our dreams, that is all changing due to the new information that we have. Where we have Saturn, Saturn is saying we have to build a strong foundation because our foundation has been shifting. It's in the sign of Pisces. It's about following your intuition, but also using your head and combining these things in your life and saying that as I move forward, this is what I want to do. Um, I have now, I, I need to focus on what is my true path, my true calling in order to to be authentic and real. And then all of this is building up with the eclipses that are gonna be happening. We're gonna be starting with the Aries and Libra axis and ending our Taurus um, Scorpio axis with the October 28th eclipse. So let's see, um, Virgo moon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I love all of this. Hello guys, hi and thank you. Leo space. All right. So I have um, Brandon. You are up first. I do not have your last initial, but I'm sure you know who you are. You did ask for a, uh, five cards. So let's talk. Um, I do all my readings cold. Um, so going by, oh, okay. So let me flip this over so you can actually see. All right. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so let's talk, Brandon. The first card is the Page of Swords. The page represents you. It's either you protecting somebody, nurturing somebody, or somebody is giving you a safe space. Uh, it's about holding a sword and saying, I'm going to keep your secret safe. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep you safe or you are saying this to somebody else. You are saying, here, I'm gonna be your support system. I'm gonna offer you uh, a secure, safe place where you can share your thoughts, your ideas with me. Um, I'm gonna nurture you, I'm gonna care for you as you go through this growth. The second card is the Queen of Wands. It generally represents feminine energy. Uh, wands are about thoughts and ideas and travel and connection. And it's about helping this person, nurturing this person as they um, navigate their thoughts, their ideas, and their travel, saying that I'm going to support you with whatever your ideas are as you move forward. The Two of Wands, this represents two people, two people moving forward. This could be taking a vacation, it could be moving, it could be traveling. It's if you look at to what the card is doing, and the card is like looking into the future and saying, this is our future, this is what we're planning to do, um, there is no looking back. You are cutting ties with the past and saying, I'm ready to move forward with whatever the future offers us as we um, navigate this together. 
The Four of Wands represents a party, a celebration. It's about it's happiness, it's joy. Um, wands, remember, are thoughts, ideas, um, speaking, connection, and it's about uh, there could be a party coming up or a wedding coming up or a gathering of some sort. And maybe the Two of Wands is the two of you traveling to that destination or traveling to that, but it's about connecting with others and it's going to be a joyous occasion. The Seven of Pentacles, I call this my investment card. You are literally looking at your cash, your property, your money, your investments and saying, is this ready to pick? Should I keep the money here? Where should I put this money? Um, like, what do I do with it? And if you are thinking about purchasing something, you are looking at all your finances and saying, how do I uh, get the best deal? Where do I get the best deal? Um, it's just with tarot tarot is you are something and everything in all of the cards it's about astrology numerology and symbolism so you look at what are you doing in the card you are looking over um your investments and saying is this ripe is this ready to pick what should i do i want to pull one more card from the oracle deck to give it like as a bonus So I pulled uh, Direction, Path, and Free Will. So with Direction, Path, and Free Will, I look at these as it's an, it's an opportunity for you to say, uh, I just need one more bit of information so everything becomes a little bit more clear with what I'm doing. So Direction, Path, and Free Will. It's about in the realm of spiritual guidance, the universe presents you with profound message about the direction of in which you're going in life. It's your life path, it's your free will. Like the adventurous Sagittarius Archer, it's about you trusting your inner compass to navigate the vast landscapes of your life. Embrace the power of your personal choice, knowing that if you have the ability to choose your path and shape your destiny, just as a compass points towards true north, connect with your intuition to discern your authority authentic direction. Allow for the spirit of exploration and expansion. Uh, for the symbolism of this card invites you to welcome the unknown and seek wisdom through new experiences. Trust the synchronicities and the sign that guides you along your journey. Acknowledge that you have the freedom to choose and create your own narrative, knowing that with each step that you take, you are aligning with your soul's purpose and embarking on a transformative spiritual quest. So I think that that definitely backs up that two of wands and the other cards. So thank you. Thank you. And let's see. All right, guys. Um, send one question. Marshy will, I will pass my friend exam. Oh, I really hope you do. Ashley Hand, what do the next four months of the year have in store for you? Well, I'm uh, hoping all good for everybody, although it is... Um, uh, like, okay, things are a little bit crazy with uh, all these planets having us integrate what's going on inside, taking the information and processing it. All right, so in the queue, we have um, Patricia. Let's take a look. You have uh, five cards. So again, I want to thank you for trusting me with your consultation. I look at this as an opportunity to connect with Divine Source and have somebody else uh, help you connect with what you already know about your ooh, two cards. Okay, let's do that. Hmm. 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 All right. So these three cards, those are minor arcana. Um, minor arcana cards are about what is happening right now. Major arcana are about things that are going to be happening over the next one to three months. And so these are timing cards. So we start off with the Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups is one, one love, one person, my heart. The cups are like fill up my cup, fill up my heart, fill up my soul. The fish represents strength and the water represents spirit, love and emotion. So this is about taking your cup and saying, I want to fill it with 
a person, a place, or a thing that I love, I trust, and I value. The Six of Wands represents you with a victory. The card represents you. Uh, there's been, uh, so think back to Greek and Roman times when people would throw a wreath to the winner who won the Olympic race and they would pick it up and they would wear it on their head. And But this is not you stopping. This is, yes, you can wear it. Yes, you've got this victory. Yes, these great things are gonna be going on, but you're not done. It's about put your head back in the game and get back into the race to move forward with. So the next card is the Hermit. I love this card because um, this is about being an old soul, being wise, intelligent, slow, steady, balanced. So the direction is what it's looking at is your victory and the Ace of Cups. It's about whatever you are doing, you're needing to take slow and steady steps that you can only see one day in front of you. You're trying to make these plans for the future. You're trying to move forward with some things, but literally you are stopped it's like um it's like somebody's taking your shirt and pulling you back and saying in order to build something of quality you have to practice patience and so it's a practiced pause it's an intentional slowdown um the three of pentacles this card represents support pentacles represent coins money home earth um house foundation and so either you are this or you are this person and this is you supporting somebody or somebody supporting you it does not always mean i'm going to give you money the support can be given with advice the su support can be given with guidance the support could be given with training so you getting advice or offering training or this could even be you want to reach that goal let me support you and show you how it's done this is also uh, this could be a mentor student guide uh, support that is given in that way in your life and it could be you or it could be somebody else offering this to you or it could be both happening at the same time now the hierophant i love this card okay so you are the lizard and the story that goes along with this is um, you go to the Hierophant. The Hierophant is the one who is, who goes between the earthly realm and the spiritual realm, and they want to have answers to things, and it's about you connecting to dreams, intuition, synchronicity, songs, music, numbers, and you are going to the Hierophant and saying, hey, Hierophant, uh, this, this little uh, moth here was a caterpillar, and now he has wings, I want wings. And the Hierophant's like, yeah, no, stay in your own lane. That's not what you requested, that's not what you want. What you want is your authentic life. You're supposed to be focusing on what your hopes, wishes, and needs are for yourself. And if you want to focus on yourself and only yourself, I'll give you guidance. I'll, I'll support you with synchronicity of uh, giving you the help that will um, like, yes, it'll be a yes answer or a no answer. The Hierophant does not come in when it gives uh, about answering questions that have to do with other people, places, and things. The Hierophant will only answer for you if you are focused on yourself and for your best and highest good. I do want to pull one more card here and um, take a look. Let's see. release and let go okay so with release and let go and again if uh, these cards are for sale in the um, there will be a link there are $25 and they can ship them to you and you can do yourself a, you can have a daily pull of these yourself all right so release and let go in the realm of your spiritual liberation the universe shares an important message of the importance of you releasing and letting go envisioning color colorful balloons floating freely in the air symbolizing the act of surrendering to which no longer serves you embracing the elements of air representing your freedom your clarity and the realm of thought draw upon the wisdom of air and astrology it's inviting you to let go of any attachments and allow for the the power of detachment just as the balloons ascend towards the sky let go of your burdens your 
fears, your limiting beliefs that weigh you down. Recognize that expansive nature of the air element, allowing your spirit to soar with newfound lightness. Surrender to the gentle currents of life, trusting in the divine flow. Through release and letting go, you can create space for new experiences, growth, and the realization of your true potential. Appreciate the liberation that comes from surrender and allowing yourself to be carried by the winds of transformation. So, Ash, um, so Patricia, I am really um, hoping that you follow along with this. I'm hoping that all of this connects up with you. And so thank you very much for trusting me. All right. Let's see. I am working diligently on cleaning my finances. Good. I have a Sag rising and Aries sun. Okay, Aries sun, know that it's going to be, uh, the eclipses are going to be activating it. All right. And Sandy, watching from Ontario. First time watching me live. Yay for you and thank you for connecting. I'm so excited. And Patricia, yes. I am so glad that um, that you are connecting with this, that you understand it, and that it means something to you because I can I can see your path. All right, all right. So let's move on. Hello, Farah. It's not available in Pakistan. I don't know what is not available in Pakistan, and if it's whatever is not, and I am so sorry it is not. All right. So Ashley, you are in the queue. Go to the next. Let's see. All right. So, Ashley, thank you for trusting me, Ashley. Okay. All right, Ashley, let's talk about this. All right, the Three of Swords. The Three of Swords represents somebody else's pain in your heart. The fact that we have three swords starting off with some things uh, leads me to believe that, like, obviously you're going through some things. Um, the Three of Swords. The Swan has not just one sword, but it's three swords. It's about somebody else's pain in your heart, meaning they're going to be going through a life lesson that you've already been through, that you can see it from very far away, that you've already said to them, hey, you shouldn't be doing this. Hey, I've already gone down this path. Hey, don't do that. Hey, you are trying to give somebody advice. You're trying to offer them support and they have to actually go through the life lesson in order to experience it themselves. Knowing that this is not about you going back and saying, I told you so. It's about you waiting in the wings, waiting for them to go through this and being there to support them afterwards. Not with an I told you so, but I got you. I got you. I support you. I love you. The Three of Swords is, it's, it's about you would rather go through the pain and the angst that somebody else is going through because you see it so clearly and you know how to work through those problems and they don't and that's what they're navigating and that's what they're learning and this is um you will be able to offer your advice and your wisdom afterwards um they're not going to take it before and you chose to come into it this lifetime to learn this lesson through um through them the Knight of Swords represents you. The Knight of Swords is, I have a sword. I'm not afraid to use it. I will be the messenger. You will be the messenger. You will support uh, somebody else. Or this is about you having to cut through some things that's going, that, are, that is going on in your life. The King usually gives the orders and the Knight is the one who has to carry through with them. The Knight comes in with delivering messages, cutting through things. Um, it's about cutting and removing. And then when I look to the next card, the Seven of Swords, I'm going to start talking about this card and the first person that comes to your mind who is, who is what this card is about, and then I'm going to flip the script. This card represents lie, cheat, or steal, and that there's somebody in your life that is a liar, a cheat, or a thief. Now, if you say, 
I don't know of anybody like that, then I'm going to flip the script and say, then this is you and you're wearing a mask. You're lying to yourself about somebody cheating you out of time, cheating you out of your energy, stealing things that you cannot get back. Like steal my crystals, but don't steal my time. Don't steal my energy. Don't take from me my, my heart, my love, my passion, my drive. And so knowing this, now you have an opportunity to say, okay, I know who this is, and now I have to have a boundary, a healthy boundary. You can either uh, cut this person away from your life, or you can say, I can move forward with not allowing them to steal my time, my effort, my energy. I need to quit lying to myself about how bad things really are, and I need to focus solely on my my higher power, my spiritual growth, my my soul's intent of what I'm supposed to be working on and not let somebody else steal my effort and my energy. After you've done this, then the Ten of Cups is what comes from it. The Ten of Cups is about, it's, it's an ending of a sort of love and spirit and emotion and the fish represents strength and it's about all that you really want. All that you really want is not things that we can touch. It's about you wanting people, places, and things to be surrounding you with um, things that you do, like time and energy. And it's not about getting a Christmas gift or a birthday gift or, or that you want a strong spiritual connection. You want a deep heartfelt connection. And this is about an ending of some sort in order for there to be a, a new beginning. Because the Ace of Wands are about an idea, a fresh start, Aces always mean one. Wands are about thoughts, ideas, communication, what I say, where I'm moving, and the fox are intelligent and smart. Some people will say sly like a fox. I like to look at the fox as um, the, the, the fox has, has to be quick and witty because they're a small animal and they have to learn to survive when all these other predators can, um, are, they are surrounded by. So think of this as one thought, one idea, one match that's in your head that you want to move forward with and that you need to follow that direction, follow that inspiration, that inner guidance. All right. Okay, let's talk about this. This is about disruption, chaos, and discord. All right. In the realm of spiritual growth, the universe is delivering a profound message about disruption, chaos, and the transformative power that they hold. You need to visualize the electrifying present of lightning illuminating the dark sky and revealing the hidden truths. That's taking you back to that card. Embrace the element of air representing change and movement in the realm of thought. Reflect on the wisdom of astrology where the disruptive energies often serve as a catalyst for growth and your evolution. Just as lightning pierces through the clouds, disrupting the calm, embrace the chaos as an opportunity for you to transform. Find strength in the storms, knowing that they bring clarity and renewal for you. Embrace the power of adaptability and be flexible, allowing the winds of change to carry you forward to higher states of being. With each flash of lightning, acknowledge the realization that even amidst chaos, there's always a guiding light for you, reminding you of your innate resilience and your capacity for growth. Understand the transformative power of disruption, for it is through chaos that the new beginnings emerge. So I feel that um, this is pushing you towards the eclipses, that it's pushing you into a new direction of leaving behind old through this chaos and cutting away and a transformation of a new for you. So um, Ashley, I hope that this all makes sense to you. And so thank you. Thank you very much for trusting me. All right. Hello, Sandy. All right. I am so glad that you have liked and subscribed. Um, everybody who is out there. Hello, Marshy Pumpkin. Hello, Sandy. 
Oh, good. All right. I appreciate you enjoying my reading style because I want to be able to connect. All right. All right, Ashley. Thank you. I know what it all means and literally gave. Oh, I'm so glad. That means that we've connected and it made sense to you. Okay, so for those of you who don't uh, know, have not had a personal reading with me, um, all of my tarot consultations, I generally start off with um, my first reading is cold. I always say a quick prayer before I begin to say, please help me tap into um, tap into their higher power, their spirit guide, their angels, or whoever it is that they are working with. Um, I dream. I dream in symbols and images and these movies and pictures and um, I dream about tarot and so when I pull your cards each one of these cards represents a story or an event of something that's happened to me in my life and so when I pull the card I'm able to connect with you because this is an event that's happened with me that I know that uh, you are somehow going through a part of that card so yeah Hi, Darlene Johnson. Lots of meaning there. Yes, it is. All right, so let's move on. Juanita, thank you very much. Um, three cards, so let's talk. All right. I appreciate everybody for joining me in the chat. All right. All right, so let's talk. All right, Juanita, the Five of Pentacles. You look at the picture and this represents you. Five, fives are always, they always mean disruption. It's about um, things that are not stable. Pentacles are money, house, home, but it's also things that we value. When people are saying, hey, how is it going, Juanita? What's going on? And you're saying, I'm fine. Everything is perfect. All right, I don't know if you know what the, uh, the F-I-N-E stands for, but that's exactly what you're going through. You are saying that you are absolutely perfect, but you're keeping everything private and into yourself. Completely understand it, completely respect it, but know that you are not alone. That the butterfly represents your ancestors, your spirit guides that are always there with you. Whenever you want to connect with someone, it's they are there to support you. You just have to reach out and say, I'm feeling lonely or I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling like I'm going through this process alone. Just let me know that you're here. Let me know that you hear me or that you're here to support me. And then ask for a sign. And then that sign, um, look for it. It can be through music or through a feather or numbers or a song. Everything is out there and this is you not this the message is you're not completely alone that the things that you're going through the hurts that you're going through um, you're keeping them to yourself but you are supported the knight of wands uh, represents you having to go after and change some things knights always take their orders from the king wands are about moving it's about what you say, how you say. This could be you saying, I have to have better boundaries. I have to speak my truth. I have to. The night is you. The wands is what you say and how you act. And it's about moving forward. What are you going to do? It's not a sword in which you have to cut somebody. It's a wand in which there needs to be magic to move forward with. Having a healthy boundary, stating what your feelings are, whether you choose to come out and share some things with people or find a select group or keep them to yourself, this is you moving forward and needing, um, it's speaking your truth in a way that's respectful of others and making sure that you're standing up for uh, yourself. Now the two of swords, I call this, I call it my shut up so I can think card. So literally you are sitting there with two swords crossed. And so this swan uh, with a heart represents family. And this swan that's offering a flower, those represent friends, social circles, your networks, your groups. And so you have some decisions that you need to make in your life and you have two different uh, factions of people coming at you and offering their advice and their suggestion literally shut up so I can think you have to go and sit and be alone and take in all of the information and not listen to either family or friends because 
you have to make this decision on your own you have to own this if you listen to them then you will not own it and therefore if you don't like the decision in the end you will blame them for it instead of taking um, ownership of exactly what's going on um, it's hard but the benefits of it are going to be empowering yourself that you have everything that you you have everything at your fingertips to make this decision and it's not about pleasing others and this may not please others this is you standing on your own two feet and having to cut away a person place thing or idea as you move forward all right so let's get one more nugget of information Oh, I like it. All right. Awareness and insight. So along with awareness and insight, this is a beautiful card. The message of this card is one of awareness, insight, and healing, and the element of water. These symbols all point towards a need, a need for emotional healing and introspection. As you delve deep within yourself, you're going to gain valuable insights and awaken to your true potential. The healing power of water reminds you to release any stagnant emotions and to let go of your past hurts. Allow the fluidity of water to cleanse and purify your soul. In astrology, the sign of Pisces is associated with intuition and deep emotional sensitivity. This is going to be a time for you to tap into your intuition and trust your inner guidance. Your heightened emotional awareness is here to help you navigate through any challenges that come your way. Remember that healing is a process and it's going to take time. Be gentle with yourself and allow the healing waters to wash away any pain and sadness that you feel. A brighter future awaits you that's full of love, joy and abundance trust the journey and know that you are on the right path and so i'm hoping that all of this makes sense for you all right oh past mining oh okay i just saw the question i'm so sorry juanita i'm gonna go back and give it like one more okay I'm not going to read your question out. I'm going to keep that personal. Um, all right. Five of Pentacles. This is working from fear, not telling everybody how this is affecting you. Knight of Wands. What you're saying, what are you doing? Having to move forward. Having to say, I have to do this, this, and this. Making the time for yourself. Um, okay. Next month. Next month is the, the eclipses. The eclipses are October 14th and October 28th. They are huge about a shift into something new. Uh, what is your um, what is your what is your rising sign? If you can tell me that, I can give you a little bit more information about this because this is uh, um, give me let's see Juanita. Tell me, uh, hit it up in the comment section if you know your rising sign, and that'll let me know a little bit more about where the planets are affecting you. Because this is saying that I have some concern, that I'm, I'm working through it, and this is, I have to go after it. Uh, taking the notes. Uh, look, this is making the magic happen. And this is the Two of Swords, uh, you, stop pause uh, get rid of other people's thoughts and ideas and awareness and insight is um oh my goodness i just wish i had your rising sign because i can give you um more information about your next month um and the date of what you have planned for next month for these tests that you're going to be taking um know that we have a lot of planets that are in retrograde it's you taking in a lot of information right now and whatever is going to be happening from this is you're going to have to put in a lot of effort in order to gain the clarity that's going to come from it um, I'm, I'm hoping that the, all of this makes sense um, Juanita I'm really hoping I don't I don't see your rising sign in here Oh, I PayPal. Is this for me, Juanita? Um, oh, you're Marshy Pumpkin. Yes, this is for you, Juanita. Yes, Juanita C. Yes. 
And so Juanita, do you know your rising sign? If you can tell me that, then I can give you a, a smidgen more information, but um, definitely uh, time to buckle down, uh, go after what you want, the notes, the everything, uh, two of swords, cut away anything that's not essential at this, this point and um, awareness and insight. I'm just sending you a lot of love with that. Like this is going to be um, working through and using your intuition. When you are taking these tests, um, the first thing, the first thought, thought that, that comes, comes to your mind, mind is going to be the, the correct, correct answer and not reading into anything because um, awareness and insight. <clears throat> this is you tapping into um, into, into your dreams, into your intuition. Asking, uh, I would also ask for spiritual guidance from um, my my higher power. And I don't know if you carry crystals with you, but I would definitely be carrying um, a darker stone for grounding. And I would carry a white stone for uh, tapping into intuition. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, all right, oh, you're an Aries, oh Lord. Okay, okay, so let me let me talk about that for just one hot second, um, Juanita, or Marshy Pumpkin. So the eclipses are going into your first house of self and your seventh house. The north node is pointing into the new direction of who you are going to become, what you are doing, setting your boundaries, focusing only on yourself before you negotiate anything with other people. Um, it's going to be going through your first house. It's a realignment. This eclipse is going to be activating like everything that's going to be about you. A changing of how you are known, how you are seen, your being, your everything. So definitely, um, definitely, definitely, yeah, Juanita, Aries. All right, so I would encourage you to uh, go. Uh, I have the eclipses with the Aries and Libra access, I would encourage you to listen to it for Aries rising and um, it'll let you know a little bit more about uh, you definitely drawing some boundaries and coming into your own. This is, um, this is gonna be a really good time for you. Aries is you going after what you really want. And so I'm, I'm super excited for you to do all of this. All right, all right, so uh, let's do, I think I have a couple more, so let's talk. All right, thank you all for hanging in there. All right. And Angie, are you still in the house? Hopefully Angela's in here. Hello, White Raven. All right. If Angie is not in the house, then you're going to have to uh, catch this on the the replay. But uh, if you are, thank you for waiting. So Angela, Angie R. Oh, wow, it's not R anymore, right? Not Angela R. It is um, Angie and Norman. All right, so let's talk. Okay. All right, Angie Johnston, let's talk. All right. And Marshy Pumpkin, you are very welcome. All right, so let's talk, Angie. So, the magician you are the magician. This is a major arcana card. It's setting you up saying, okay, what it is that you are going to be offering. Um, there's a lot of symbolism that goes with this card. The angel wings represent Archangel Michael uh, asking for protection or uh, summoning and saying, can you protect my family, my friends, things that people that surround you. There's a belt around the middle that represents a snake and it's about shedding your skin and evolving and changing and growing, being very balanced in everything that you're doing. Your hands are representing as above, so below. Everything that you put out into the universe, you know that is coming back to you. The in infinity symbol that's above your head represents that you are taking everything that you know and it's not about 
learning anything. It's about recalling some things from past lives and saying, I have this, I am the magician. All of the elements are represented in what is uh, hanging from the wings. So it's the earth, the air, the water, the fire. And so as a number one, you need for nothing. This is not about taking a class, taking a workshop. You have everything at your fingertips to create magic, make magic for yourself and for others. Over the next one to three months, you are going to be creating something from nothing. It is absolutely amazing of what the magician can offer when they're in your life. Now the Six of Pentacles, this represents you and what you give. I say that this is about being an imbalanced giver and it's about music, things that you are given, have a form of currency to help the plants that represent what you are on top of. And so it's not about the money. It's the things that you give the most are a form of currency. He's giving music, but this is time, love, energy, and it's things that you give freely, willingly. You take everything that you need and you give willingly to others and you don't realize that what you give has this ripple effect and they are in turn able to give it and pass it along to others and that's how you receive what you want from it. Now the King of Pentacles. The King of Pentacles represents usually masculine energy. So if you are um, with a significant other or it's about somebody in your life who's solid, stable, reliable, it's about money, it's about um, sometimes being a little stubborn and uh, not being flexible, not changing some things. And it's uh, wanting to spend money on the home, spend money on uh, remodeling, redecorating. This is literally, it is about money, house, home, and currency, and what you are doing with this. All right, the Six of Swords. The Swan represents either you or somebody else. I'm going to um, pretend that this is somebody else. And if it's, and then I'm going to discuss it as if it were you. So, um, if the swan is you, this is you nurturing and caring for somebody, saying, "Leave the troubled waters in the past." The birds represent thought and memory, and the swords are down in the water. And this is troubled water and leaving the troubled water in the past. The if this is not you nurturing for somebody else, this is you needing to leave something that's happened in the past, in the past, moving on past it and saying, I know that no longer serves me. That's not who I am anymore. I physically have to like leave the past in the past, let the dead dog lie. I have to put down my sword and not use it. The Six of Cups represents, um, I love this card in that I call it going down memory lane. The water represents working from love, spirit, emotion, heart. The fish represents strength and you're having a tea party. You are literally closing your eyes and saying, oh, I remember when the kids were young. Oh, I remember when I could do this. Oh, I remember when we all got together and do this. It is you going down memory lane and saying, I remember when we could do this or that this happened. And these are all beautiful, positive memories. The message that comes with this card is, it's time for you to be focusing on you and your new path to move forward, your spiritual growth, you moving forward with um, creating new memories. This card is about remembering the memories for what they are, but not getting caught in the past. Some people will say, oh, my high school years were the best times of my life, or I remember when the kids were younger, or I just, this holiday was absolutely the best it's not. The best is today. The best is what's going to be coming. You have to make every single day count. Create a new memory for every single day of your life moving forward and not getting caught in the past for what's going on in your life. All right, so one more card. Let's talk about that. And Angie, I really appreciate you trusting me with your tarot tonight. Ooh, 
I like it. All right. Cause, effect, and consequences. All right. So cause, effect, and consequences in the realm of spiritual understanding, the universe unveils a profound message about the interconnected nature of cause and effect and then the inherent consequences of our actions. So envision the mesmerizing ripples that are formed by the raindrops, gently falling on the surface of the water, symbolizing the far-reaching impact of our choices. Embrace the elements of water, representing your emotions, your intuition, and the flow of life. Reflect on the wisdom of water in astrology. It's reminding you about the interconnectedness of all things in life. With each decision that you make, you create a ripple effect that resonates throughout the universe. Understand the power of awareness and the conscious choices, knowing that your actions have consequences, not only for yourself, but for the world around us. Just as raindrops create expanding ripples, make our choices be guided by compassion, wisdom, and a deep understanding of the profound interconnectedness of all beings. So Angie, yes, Angie, I am oh, such fantastic reading. You know what? I am sending you a big fat heart, um, big fat hug, because I, I just feel this for you that um, just the water, the emotion, the spirit, the tears, like the the intuitiveness of like it brings it back in with the six of pentacles so sending you out a uh, a big fat hug all right so thank you um oh, gypsy girl i am so sorry i don't do one card but i do three and i do five three cards for um 20 and five cards for 40 so i hope you get in the queue tonight yeah and angie I am giving you a big fat hug, sending some love out to everybody that is on here tonight. Um, Lema from Arizona, hello, and how are you? And V, yes, readings are open and hi from wherever you are. All right. Hello, Sandy, sending you a big fat hug from wherever you are. Um, Lema. Hi, I, I'm on his mind and initials B. I don't understand that. How I'm I on, how are you? And are you on his mind with the initial B? Not 100% sure what that, the explanation. All right, all right, so thank you. All right, Erlina. I hope that I'm saying that right, Erlina. Three cards. Let's talk some tarot. Um, since oh, oh yeah, I'm so um. Let me ask, ask the, the cards, cards what they, they have, have to say. say. I, I so agree. agree. I, I always. I think it's always best to say, "Hey, what, what does spirit want me to know?" know? And, and Virgo Sun, Gemini, Gemini Rising. Mm, love that Virgo Sun. Know that, that the eclipses, eclipses are going to be eclipsing your sun. The North Node is going across, will be crossing your sun, so I'm sure you've already felt it. And it's about pointing you in the direction in which you were off track. And now it's you saying, I have to focus on me. I have to focus on uh, what I want to do. I have to move forward with what I'm doing. And so, yeah, Erlina, great. All right, so let's talk here. Hmm. The Sun card. Seven of Pentacles. Oh, wait, no, five. All right, so let's talk. The Sun. This is a major arcana card. So this card has a lot of meaning that you are going to be the center of the universe for a lot of people, places, and things. Uh, the Sun illuminates. It uh, lights up the room. It. Uh, a lot of people are going to need you. It's like when you're gone, some things like fall apart. Now the sun has a lot of different meanings in that you are going to be able to see through the cracks in what people are saying and doing. Meaning if they're not telling you 100% of the truth, you're gonna be able to see through the cracks and know it. You'll be able to make a decision whether you can say, look, we just need to stop here before you go any further, or I need you to get back right on track. 
Um, the sun not only seeing through lies and cracks, the sun has this aerial view. So you're going to be able to have this like view above things that are going on and people are going to say, hey, is this going to work? Or, or, and you're going to say, no, that's not. And they're going to say, well, how do you know? You're just going to know. Your intuition is going to be spot on with uh, this person is going to be good for this. Or like your your intuition is just going to be knowing things. It's about you having an aerial view like the sun does over everything that's going on and having endless energy that this is what I'm taking care of. This is what I'm doing. The sun also takes its light and it shines it on other planets and the moon because the moon does not have its own light. So I always use uh, the example um, in my life of, so I, I do mission trip work and I go down to West Virginia and with the Appalachian uh, warmer, safer, dryer, working on homes. And so there's three churches that they raise money to do this. Now I don't belong to any of the three churches, but I do participate in their fundraising and in the actual uh, mission work with going down there and working on the homes. And so I will call my friends and say, hey, they're having a chili cook-off. Let's go. And they're going to have a bake sale. Bring your money. We're going to spend our money. And so this is me taking my light and saying, this is a really great cause. And gathering my friends or gathering other people saying, hey, focus on this. This is really important. This person, place, or thing needs the light right now, needs to be able to be seen. You're going to be taking taking your light and putting it on a person, place, thing, or cause, drawing attention to it to support it. This could be to illuminate some things that are going on that for the better or to illuminate some things that there needs to be some endings to. Remember, one to three months. The Seven of Pentacles, this is the investment card. This is you looking over the strawberries and saying, do I pick this, do I not pick this? Do I take my money, do I put it here? The money that this is referring to is more than grocery money. This is about if you are uh, thinking about purchasing uh, something that's bigger, uh, can you get it cheaper? Can you get a coupon for it? Uh, is this the best quality? Looking over all the details of it, is now the right time to purchase or buy this? Or I have this money, where do I put it? What do I do with it? Where do I, where do I move it to get the best investment for it? The Five of Pentacles. The Five of Pentacles is about, fives always mean disruption. And Pentacles, this is money, finances, uh, feeling solid, feeling stable, feeling reliable, but keeping your feelings to yourself and not sharing them with others. The butterfly represents your spirit guides and your ancestors that are always there. And this is you and people are saying, hey, how's it going, Erlina? How, like, how, how's life going? And you're saying, oh, I'm fine. It's all okay. Well, you're navigating some things in your life. You're navigating these changes, these things that um, are needed from you. And how do you support other people, places, and things in your life? And it can be daunting. And you're not sharing all of these feelings. Um, I, I understand the not wanting to share with other people everything. This is like coming out onto Facebook and airing the dirty laundry. That does not mean that you cannot share it with a trusted friend or a counselor or uh, some uh, a, a significant other. So I encourage you to connect in and tap in with your spirit guides, your ancestors, your higher power, and um, be the sun. The sun is just, I'm, I'm super excited for you because I, I absolutely love the sun. It just means that you're going to be the center of the universe for a lot of things that are going to be going on and changes. All right. So let's talk. Ooh, I like it. All right. All right. Tangled, woven, and intertwined. In the realm of spiritual interconnectedness, the universe delivers a fiery mes message of the tangled, woven, and intertwined nature 
of your existence. Envision the mesmerizing dance of fire, its flames leaping and intertwining, creating a beautiful tapestry of light and warmth. Embrace the element of fire representing your passion, transformation, and the realm of spirit. Reflect on the wisdom of astrology where fire symbolizes inspiration, creativity, and the spark of divine energy within all of us. Just as the, the flames weave together, honor the intricate connections that bind us all. Recognize that we are all part of a larger cosmic tapestry. Embrace the profound interplay of energies, for in the intertwinement lies the richness of life. Allow the fire within you to ignite your passions, illuminating your path and fueling your journey. Allow for the power of unity and interconnectedness, knowing that together we create a harmonious symphony in the grand dance of existence. All right. So thank you. Thank you very much. And hopefully that makes sense to you, Arlena. I'm hoping that um, all of that... And um, hello all to Cheryl, um, giving light. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, oops, there we go. So again, I want to thank you all for being here with me tonight. I thank you for trusting me with your tarot. I invite you to come back next Tuesday as we talk about the um, the new moon that's going to be in Virgo. Um, remember that tonight I am dropping at midnight the video on Jupiter stationing retrograde. And uh, you can look on my YouTube for Mercury that's retrograde, Libra, the sign that, that um, Air, uh, Mars in Libra, that Venus has just moved direct, and all the other planets that are retrograde, that this is uh, your September and October forecast for all of this is pushing you forward and saying, I now need you to integrate some things and move within. So um, I hope that you join me next Tuesday for some astrology. If you would like to get on board with that away, right away, you can always sign up ahead of time for uh, this in the PayPal. I'm going to include a PayPal link. Be sure to include your sun, your moon. I'm sorry. I will take care of that. Be, be sure to include your exact date, time, and location of your birth. And I will be able to give you um, exactly everything that's going on in your life. So um, I greatly appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for uh, joining us.